spring is in the air. It is March 15th, the middle of March. And we are now, well, we're actually not in spring yet. We've already changed our clocks. We're almost there. Hi, it's Robbie. And what I'm gonna do is a little bit different type of mid month garden tour. I'm literally, I know I say this all the time, but I'm literally going to zip through. The reason is I'm doing more work that, that you cannot see. Like in other words, I'm clearing all the brown leaves off and I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna do where. And we're not quite there. I'm gonna start a lot of seeds, probably this week in the house. I'm gonna go back to the nurseries and look around. Let me walk through as I talk, you'll see. This is amazing. This is last year's plant and it will turn in the soil. I will be taking it out, oh my gosh. Isn't that beautiful? But the, the point is, I do want to get ready to put all new seeds and plants in here. Let me keep walking. And you're not going to see if I walk you through from two weeks ago a big difference because there is no difference. I'm going to take all the tool off. I have decided that. All that tool is going. I'm going to pull all the stakes off and start over. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the Malabar spinach. I don't eat a lot. It's so pretty to grow. So I'm gonna go through all of these. I may plant radishes again in there because I did it last time, it was fabulous. Never got to even set that one up last year, but see, this is what I'm starting to do. This is soil, and this is not next year's soil. This is not next month's soil. That is soil right now. I can grow in that, put anything on the top of that and start growing with some green leaves added to it because you want a mix of green and brown and it will just work perfectly. So as you can see, you can't see anything different here. And I am gonna go through here and start composting. I have been working on the far garden way down there. So that's where I've been working. Let's go in the front yard because I've done nothing. I have moved some of those, what would you call those buckets of soil a little bit, but I have a few more left. Let's go over there and you'll see. So here, I haven't done anything yet and I'm going to have an issue because of the trees. I'm going to, they've gotten bigger and I'm going to have more shade. So I'm going to gut this out. This is broccoli. You know who likes broccoli. It's probably broccolini. And I'm going to gut this out and start over here. Here I do believe there should be no issue of growing squash. It's back here. I don't know if I can grow squash because look how shady it is now. It's not going to get much better. It will get, it might get six hours of sunlight, but I'm not sure. So I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with all this. And we'll see as we go. I'd like to take the geranium out and put this in the bird garden. And I haven't even gotten into my sweet potatoes back there yet. So this I will be redoing when I get there. But see, there's less pots. I've been using it. I don't want to actually do too much with this soil. And the reason, you know, like just dump it, because this soil came out of other totes that were moved from the front yard. I still have to do my ginger table, and I may just dump this all into a wheelbarrow and then just mix in maybe some green leaves and stuff and go to it. Just get this all out. So this will be gone really, really soon. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave that table like that or what I'm gonna do. So it's very, very shaded here. And when it's very shaded and cool, I'm going through a jungle, I get some black fly. I don't worry about the black fly because it goes away. It's the type of aphids, it's black. The bush tits come in and eat it. But the point is, as soon as the sun hits it and we start drying out, they just disappear. So I don't worry about that, isn't that pretty? And I wanna get my blueberries out. So I've got to work in here. Like I said, it's clearing. Right now, it's mainly collecting leaves, getting it all out, and deciding where and what I want to grow. This too, I haven't gotten to this yet because I've got a lot of stuff. Gary's working his tail off in his garden, but I've been trying to get videos done and get stuff done. Celery, we'll get that out soon. I might move the celery. All this has to be collected. This is all soil. This is the top leaves from the ginger. So this will go back somewhere else. Maybe not here. You know, if this starts to grow, I'm in trouble. I wanna get it out before it grows. But I'll put it in another tote. And then what I'm gonna do is literally dump. I'm gonna start picking these things up and dump them straight into a large tote or, or maybe a tote that's in my wheelbarrow. 
and then I'm going to go for it, get out all the ginger and turmeric and well, replant what I want, freeze what I want to save. And then here, this is the stevia already coming back, see? Comes back on its own. Do you see that? I want you to see this. See this pot? This pot, that's the original stevia. And every year it comes back in the same pot. I literally set the pot in there. Now pieces got in here. So I have some stevia coming up. Let me see, is this, oh yeah, this is stevia. See, this isn't in a pot, see? Sorry. There is a pot in there, I think, but it's not from the stevia. I don't know what pot's in there. But that is the original one. I bought that quite a few years ago now, and it comes about every year. It just completely dies back in the winter, and now it's already spring. So this is coming back, and all this, I keep looking. Please don't start growing, because I want to get this out, hopefully this week and compost all that. Okay, let's go into the main garden. Like I said, I want you to see things that have changed, but since I think in two weeks we'll have a big change. Still using this for my compost dump because I've got so much kitchen sc scraps and leaves and stuff. I just dump it around and nothing new in the bird garden. I have not worked in there. Now Gary, He's doing something. I'm just doing a quick zip around on the garden tour. So, wow, you've got a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm putting in the pegs or the oh. stones. You know what, let's talk about this for a second. If you saw the other video, you saw Gary brought home the gazebo and he, did, he didn't have a use for it in his garden. I said, well, I sure do. We'll get into this in detail after he's done, but I told him I want it. I took dibs on it. Because what I'm doing, I can almost call it a bird room. Let me see if I can zoom out for a minute. Is that cool? Is that really cool? Okay, there's gonna be a lot more to what you see, but we've kind of put it together. He's put it together in the size that I wanted. I can see everything in here. I can see my fountain that I absolutely love that I made out of cement that the birds use all day. The bucket that's in the shade, the birds use that. I can't see that one, but that's okay. I don't have to. I can see it on the other side. And I'm gonna change all this around and get more flowers. And there's gonna be a cross beam on here. And that's to keep certain things out that I don't want. And then I'll have birds in here that I do want. So you'll see as it changes. But otherwise, no, there hasn't been anything done in here yet. Just going through and starting to collect different leaves. If I sound like I'm in a, in a rush, I really am. I'm excited to get out here and work and do stuff in the garden. And I'll tell you, when you do a video that's an hour long, it takes me about 20 minutes to a half hour to download it. Then I've got to look at it and watch it. Listen to myself again. Look at this. It's like a jungle of collard. I've been making coleslaw out of it. So then I've got to go through it. So that takes me about two hours. Then I got to upload it to YouTube and that's another hour, hour. And usually it's longer, hour and a half. So it's an all day thing. And I decided I'm just going to grab my phone, do a zip through because I didn't want to leave some of you hanging that really want to see what's going on. See, this is all, pur this is purple tree colored. This is green tree colored, the green one. That makes a really good coleslaw. I do believe I've got the recipe on there. Gary loves it. And it's like, what do you do with tree colored? Oh my gosh, you eat it raw. I put it in the blender in a certain way and I chop it and it's just so good. And then you mix it up and you make your, well, you make your coleslaw out of it. So nothing new, the papayas are still growing. Let's go out the gate. All right. So here I still have the rosemary, which is interesting. The deer have been sleeping in there. So they've been hanging out. We found three spots that the deer are now ha hanging out. They're now hanging out in here and sleeping in there. And we figured they're sleeping in there too. And there may be another one because there's six that come through here. The papaya, I think it's the drought. I've been watering and I'm watering it. I hope that one's not on the way out. We'll see what happens. Oh, here's another one. I brought one in yesterday. So we'll see, and I wanna get, I've got another batch of papayas on my plant in here that's growing in a tote. You'll see it when we go further down. Here, I did my strawberries already. I love this thing, cause I can turn it. Oh, look, 
look, I have a stra oh, more strawberries. Cool. I love this. I've got the video on this. This is just the chair I picked up. I've got a tote lid here so it holds it nice. These containers, you get those at the 99 cent store. This is just a coffee container. I literally painted it. And the reason it's up there in the middle is when I water this, it waters that. So I can fill this up with water and then it will water that and trickle down. And then you can still have to hand water a few other things, but it's really, really cool. What else is going on here? See, I haven't done anything in here. That's why I don't want to waste your time for an hour showing you something that hasn't been done yet. I thought I was gonna get holes in all these buckets. I'm determined to find the purple bucket. I still haven't found one. And I wanna get all these with plants on the bottom. That's my goal because I really like the chair garden. I don't wanna catch buckets of water because if I'm catching buckets of water, then I'm watering too much. My plants don't need that much water. And then I wanna get to this pretty soon because this is a must do this year. This is gonna have buckets and then there'll be another tote, maybe two, we'll see as I set them up. And I've got to get all these set up. The ones that I'm going to reset up. This is staying because this is a fabulous plant. It is a perennial. It's going to grow for many years. And that is pepino. And I've been cutting those up. I grab one and then I grab strawberries. It's really cool. Ch I peel that. You peel it. You chop it up. And then put in the strawberries. Mix them all up. I chop up the strawberries too. Just cut them up. And it's a nice little fruit salad to go with dinner. So good because that is real sweet. Leave them till that they're that size, yellow, and they're so sweet and so good. I'm not sure if I'll leave the celery, and I am actually thinking of taking out all the broccoli or broccolini and putting in new. I wanna build my cold frame back again. This was a cold frame last year. Redo that. And like I said, I haven't done anything else here because I am slowly getting other projects. We're gonna get into that one. That one's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, here you know, we've kind of made a circle. My garden's in a circle and then Gary's is down below. That's why I rarely go there. This has been fabulous. I don't know if the deer are picking off tomatoes, but I have seen them here, but I know my granddaughter's been picking a ton of tomatoes. I've been picking, so we'll see how that goes. And I definitely want to get more tomatoes here. The, this is the warm wall. This is a separate climate. Let me step back. When you have a wall like this, it creates heat, which is perfect to start seeds on and all the seeds are trying to start whether I want them or not. So this is good for a winter garden and it depends on your where you are, a fall garden if you're cold. Here in the fall, we're really hot. So I'll think about how I wanna plant this. I know squash does good. I wanna get more cucumber growing and do different things here. Tomatoes I could do here, but tomatoes don't need it that warm. We'll get into that soon. So that's what's going on there. There's my high top, my high arch. I've got the video on that. If it's not up, it will be up anytime. That's a lifesaver. You can make that in so many different shapes and ways that you can leave it on permanently if you wanted to protect your plant. Now, the reason this is here is I want it, wow. I wanted to get, so you can put it on with clothespins too, just to hold it. Well, the reason I put it on with clothespins on this one is this lid does not go with this tote. So I went ahead and put clothespins on. This is cool. This has been great. This is, this lid was made last year. So you don't throw them away. You use them again. I'm in the, there, there you go. See that? You don't throw them away. You just use them, put them, find the spot for them. And even if they have a few holes, it's not going to hurt. Isn't this beautiful? Now, I know that this is a zucchini, but I, I see a lot of this is Swiss chard, and I'll have to go through that and take that out. This is just some walking onions, but I wanted to make sure nothing bothered it as the baby seedling was growing. This is the papaya I'm going to get out, and I'm pretty much done here. I just have to go through the few I haven't done yet, and as soon as I have something to plant in it. Okay, here, I just have to get rid of the plastic bag but everything else just cover it in sticks and soil and on you go so this is pretty much done this is just a matter of when I get the plants that I want to plant I go for it so I'm really excited the geraniums are planted in the ground there's a geranium there and a geranium there and then here is my meadow my wild meadow right now I haven't done anything with I'm not 100% sure, but
but I do believe there may be a rabbit's nest right here. He dug a hole the other, she, she, she dug a hole the other day and left a big hole as she sat there and waited for me to go. Now I left the hole and she came back about an hour or two later and buried the hole. When they bury the hole, a lot of times that means there's babies in there. We've seen them do it. They'll have babies on the outside, probably so they don't, they keep the hole clean. And as soon as they have their babies, they put them in a hole and they cover them. And they only have to go and feed them once in a while. And so they'll dig up the hole when nobody's around. They'll go in there and feed their babies and then they'll cover the hole back. So I'm not sure, so I have to be careful watering. I'm not gonna dig it up. I know people have dug it up. I will not dig it up. I'm very careful watering my sugar cane and my moringa there. So we'll just see what happens. And then I'm letting the wild rocket do its thing and I am watering it so the bees can use it. But I'm getting close to doing something there. And then here, I did come out here, put a cage here because here, I hope nothing got in there. Uh-oh. I think something did get in there. I have a couple. There's another, there's one there. This is chia seed. But I think something got in there and ate it. I'm gonna have to put tool. This didn't work. So I'm gonna have to put some tool there. And then the chia plant will grow and it will grow up into a beautiful, it looks like salvia, purple flower. So I'm gonna have to get something there. There's one seedling there. There was a couple more the other day. And that's it. So I haven't gotten to this yet. I want to change and put some more water features in here. Like I said, right now I've been rushing to actually, it's not cleaning, it's collecting stuff, getting ready to do stuff. And then what's here? My papaya, my papaya, that's not my papaya, my pomegranate. This one's got flowers. Oh, all over. Cool. Look at the whole top. Last year I don't think it had any. So we'll see. Ground is really bad here. It's hard clay and it's in the ground because you cannot not grow pomegranate. If you eat a pomegranate, spit the seeds in a flower pot, keep it watered, they will grow. And they're bomb proof. They, you can't kill them. You can't do anything with them unless you took them out and completely dried them out because you can pull them out and let them lay there. And if it's damp, they'll wait. It's, it's the strongest little plant when they're little. So that's why I've got them in pots and everywhere. I don't even want that many pomegranate. And then this will be a project coming up really soon. And I told you here, I'm gonna pull most of that out. This, to make it easier, I'm gonna leave the soil. The soil right now is probably packed down really tight because Gary put a lot of clay in there. And so what I'm gonna do is just leave it, chop a lot of that out and drop it. Like nature does, just drop everything to the ground. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the buckets. I'm starting to get them ready. Fill it up with branches and stuff and then top it off with some soil. Yeah, there's that squash that grew. And that I'll probably leave because that's growing really nice. That's Swiss chard. Thin it out a little bit so they grow better. Then I'm gonna put all the buckets in there. And what will happen because of all the holes, see the holes? I don't have to worry about tree roots or gophers or anything in the truck bed. What will happen is the earthworms will come and they'll go up and down and they will just make the soil perfect. And in the meantime, everything will grow. So I don't have to do any work. Let nature do its work. And that is basically it. We have gone in a circle in less than 20 minutes. I really hope one of these make it, but it probably won't. It's been chewed on by the deer. Just to see if they're any good. This is an avocado tree that came up in the wood chips that Gary had dumped here years ago. And I was going to pull it out, but we left it. The thing is, it's going to be from rootstock, so it's kind of a hit and miss what it will taste like. The ones from the rootstock are really stringy. They're usually small and black when they ripen, and then they're stringy, but you could mash it down and take the strings out, put it through a sieve, and it tastes really good, but they're just stringy. And then this is my nectarine tree. We'll see. Oh, look, look, look. Oh my goodness. I haven't really come over here to look. Look at that. You see that right here? See, it doesn't want to focus. Come on, focus on me. It doesn't want to focus, but this is full of nectarines until the deer come and chew them off. And then the chair garden. All I have to do is decide what I want to plant. I don't want to plant too early because we, I have seen a freeze go through in April. 
in the beginning of April. So I kind of want to think about my plants and what I want to plant. This will be gutted. This, it depends on the tomatoes. You know what this is? Nibbled on by a deer. But this one that has a little yellow, I may end up taking that one out. We'll see, and then leave that. These are transplanted carrots. And then I've got lettuce in here and celery. This is gonna be gutted, that's gonna be gutted, that's gonna be gutted. I don't know. This is just loaded with tomatoes again. So they're coming up. So I may leave that. This will probably be gutted. This is the first walking onions having babies. See the babies? That is a baby walking onion. Right there, baby walk. See, there's one there. There's one here. This is a pregnant onion. And there's one here. So like you can pull these leaves off and you can compost them or eat them, but you don't want to pull these off because these are going to travel all the way up. They're going to pop open on the top and there'll be baby walking onions. And then in theory, in nature, they would fall back to the ground, touch the nice damp wet soil as they mature, set their own roots and then leave the mother plant that way. But you can take them off yourself as soon as they're mature. You'll see, they look like little baby walking onions. That's the time you take them off. You can leave them for a long time. Just the moment the bottom part of the stem turns brown, that's when you want to get them off because they're no longer feeding off that plant. If they don't get enough water, they'll die. So that's it. That's it. And as far as the pots on the bottom, I absolutely love them. I haven't even gotten serious in planting anything. I've got a geranium cutting in there. I've got my oregano in there. Yes, there's a celery and a Swiss chard in there. There's a lettuce in there until the, the rabbits find it. There's walking onions there, celery. Looks like walking onions. I'm not sure, it could be sal thistle in there. There is celery. Look at how big the celery is. If you looked a couple weeks ago, they were real tiny. They are taking off celery there and more oregano. And this is what I wanted. If I want to save any water, I can put water in buckets and then I can go through with a dipper. I threw some leaves in there just to give it a little nutrition. Keep it covered and you don't get mosquitoes. When you have water sitting in buckets, which I do, I have done, you, knew, you know I did it last year, without fish or anything, and I don't want to put any chemicals in there to treat it, then you could get mosquitoes. Now, if you see the mosquito larva, no biggie, you just dump it back in. It becomes plant food. But if you forget about it, you can end up with some mosquitoes. Now I've decided with all the gardens I'm setting up, I think it's better that I water less because obviously I'm watering too much if I'm getting a bucket of water underneath. Water less and have plants growing and they'll benefit because all that great nutri nutrition that's coming out of there because it's full of you know leaves and branches and kitchen scraps and everything. Well, it's gonna water the plants on the bottom. I can even start plants that way. I can put cuttings down there. If you don't have to worry about critters, you could put anything down there. You could put flowers and make it look really pretty. So that's what I decided to do this year. This is something different and we'll see how it goes. So that's it. I wanted to do a quick spin around in less than 30 minutes. And there's our junk pile that you saw the other day. See, this is what's so good. I've been collecting the soil out of other totes that I don't need because sometimes I like, see there's even an eggshell. Sometimes I like to go back take some soil out just a little bit and then put in some more leaves and stuff and i don't want to throw that soil away because that's my soil that i made like down there under these trees now keep in mind trees don't like plants growing so a lot of times they deter plants see the grass there's kind of a line a lot of trees don't let other plants grow but they are creating their own soil and their own plant food because the leaves are falling and as soon as they fall, the top layer stays brown, looks like leaves, but the bottom is breaking down. You'll have earthworms and everything when you start digging around trees. So basically what I'm doing is I'm making my very own soil. And that's it. So I hope you're not disappointed that it was too quick, but I am just so anxious to get into the garden today and get things done. I really want to get a lot of stuff done and I don't want to sit for six hours on the computer. I'd rather go live with you and do six hours with you. Oh, maybe not six hours. But I've got so many things I want to do and you guys can use right now. And then I'm using, 
just getting my seeds going. I'm doing the totes and containers all over the place. There's just so many things. I want to get the things set up because last year there was a lot of stuff I wanted to set up and I didn't do. This year, I want to set it up. Now, I want to thank all the people that joined and their members. And I know you're waiting and thinking, what are you doing special? I'm still trying to get that together. But what I am going to do, this is a YouTube thing. They want members. They want shorts. There's certain things they tell you they want. What I might do is at times, like maybe when I go do my seeds, I might just turn on the camera and have YouTube just put it on for members. I'm not going to be doing anything, just planting seeds. I don't even know if I'll be able to answer questions. It's, it's different than going live, but I'll try different things and we'll see as time goes on if I can get some cooking together. Because there's a few things I do that I think a lot of people would really appreciate just stuff I've come up with to save money. And boy, this year, so many of us are gonna to have to be really be living on a budget with gas going up, food prices are going up, everything is going up. So we'll get more into that and keep an eye out. I don't know if I do a members only how, I don't know that much about it. So when I hit it, it may let you know, it may not. I haven't done it yet. I don't know if I'll get to that today. Who knows, I, I wanna get my seeds done. So maybe I'll try that. And then I'll do, I do want to do more live. I'm trying to get that worked out here with the internet because it doesn't come out really good, especially in Gary's garden. I so want to do it in Gary's garden. So ask questions if you've got questions. And if I don't answer it, it doesn't mean I didn't read it. It means maybe I'm going to get a video together on that. So, because I've seen stuff, boy, I went to a nursery and I saw a raised bed and I was shocked. The raised bed was $150 and it was, it was smaller than two totes, smaller than two totes. And it was about a 30 gallon. And I couldn't believe the price with knowing that anybody can do that for like $10 and they wanted 150 and you could do it better. We'll talk a lot about that. So with that, have a wonderful day. I'm getting back to work in the garden and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Is that good?